All right, welcome back to my fitness page. No longer preparation for the Ironman. As the video showed, the Ironman was a success. One of the things I haven't been able to do is show my medal. So that's a years of hard work <laughs> right there. So welcome back. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to introduce you guys to a new series. It's called Joints Unleashed. Now the reason I called Joints Unhinged the name of the series is that the next 12 weeks I really want to focus on, to me, the most important things that I should have been focusing on since the beginning, which I haven't, this video series is going to hold me accountable to finally do a program and strictly, strictly focus on this program for the next 12 weeks, which is going to focus on the strengthening and increasing the flexibility of my knees. Now, let me kind of tell you a quick backstory. I've had surgery on both knees, very simple surgeries, uh, meniscus tears on each. One was a suture and the other one was a scrape. One was obviously easier to recover than the other, but the doctor did say that I, or the surgeon did say that I would have or would experience arthritis after 10 years. 10 years has come and gone and I experienced arthritis. So one of the things that one of my best friends, Larry, told me if I want to avoid arthritis in my knees, he said, increase my flexibility. So that was told to me about 10 years ago and maybe a little less, and it has changed my perspective as a trainer. Because of that, I really got into mobility, got into flexibility, and although I've increased my mobility and my flexibility so much from that conversation that I had with Larry, there was just the last, if you wanna call it the last couple inches, just weren't there and I just thought that I wouldn't have the strength to have the full bend of the knees. So I kind of got to the point of I just accepted it. Then during the Ironman and the Ironman training, one of the things that I've experienced was the increase of the strength and the flexibility of my knees. And I think it has to do with the cycling of all those hundreds of miles not including the run, not including the, the uh, swim, but I think all that training really strengthened my knees in a way that I wasn't doing. I wasn't running, I wasn't swimming, and I definitely wasn't riding bikes for hundreds of miles. And the reason I never got into it is for the last you know, uh, eight years or so, I've been doing jujitsu. And when the surgeon said that I was gonna experience arthritis, I really wanted to stay away from anything that I was going to think that was going to increase the time of me getting arthritis. So I, I really stuck, you know, kind of stuck away or shied away from any type of running. Although I did biking, but I did a lot of mountain biking. So a lot of it was going downhill. So it wasn't a lot of the pedaling that I was doing during the Ironman training. But, and I wasn't swimming, you know, I just never got into swimming for uh, exercise. So now that I had to force myself to do that type of training for the Ironman, I really saw the benefits of all I would say cycling, but we'll just say all three, all three of the training for my knees. So that gave me hope. And I saw the difference when I was, when I would show clients uh, certain movements, when I would get into my deep squat position. If I'm in someone's guard in jujitsu, if I'm in someone's guard in that position is I'd have to posture up and I have to be on my knees. And if I can't put my butt to my knees, then I'm not gonna have a very good posture to defend myself. So there were a lot of different things that my knees were affecting me in the sports that I was doing, especially Jiu Jitsu. So when I saw that glimmer of hope that I can increase this strength and flexibility, I decided that now is the time with all this learning I've been doing, I just wanna keep the momentum going and by creating content, it holds me accountable. So I decided, boom, that's what I wanna focus on for the next 12 weeks, or at least part of what I want to practice for the next 12 weeks. And then after this 12 week training, the goal is to then prepare for a half Ironman. I'm actually looking into the Boulder, Colorado uh, half Ironman in June. Actually, the date is June 8th. So this series of Joints Unleashed will be a 12 week program focusing on, think of it as I'm taking my car to the shop before the next race. So this focus that I'm gonna focus on is strictly going to be for 
the recovery and the flexibility of my joints. Hence, joints unleashed. And at the same time, with this learning process that I wanted to continue, is I also wanted to, totally different goal, kind of out of left field, but somewhat uh, relatable, is I've done jujitsu now for the last 15 or so years. And I have accomplished the goal that everyone wants to achieve when they join jujitsu is to become a black belt. So actually, next year in April will be my three years as a black belt. But just because one is a black belt doesn't mean that they know everything that there is to know about jujitsu. They actually say that once you receive your black belt, then you're ready to learn or ready to start to learn jujitsu. And I didn't understand that when I heard it, but now being in the black belt realm, I've had to, not had to, but I've reinvented myself. And there's always a reinvention of yourself, not just in jujitsu, but in everything. Hence, again, another reason why I do this video or these videos. So one of the things that wasn't a big part of my journey in jujitsu was the leg attacks, right? Dean Lister once said to neglect the legs when the legs are 60% of your body is just crazy. So one of the, again, I just, for whatever reason, there wasn't a leg locking person in our academy or at least dominating that, w that way of thinking. So kind of gone through all these years without really working on my leg locks. So I called one of my good, good friends, Benji Silva, and I decided to hire him to teach me his leg locking systems. So the reason why they slightly relate is I need to have the flexibility of my legs and especially my hips and my knees to do these movements that I'm not familiar with. So if I'm going to learn one, I have to work on the other and vice versa. So to me, there were relatable goals and there are two things that I really wanted to focus on and I'm glad now I made the decision to focus on it. So joints unleashed are going to be focusing on my flexibility journey and my leg locking journey just for the next 12 weeks just to keep me motivated and in the meantime although i'll be focusing on those two things for the series i will also be continuing my biking continuing my running and continuing my my swimming so that will i'll sprinkle in some triathlon training in there as well but again this is mainly for rehab fixing type work so that's what joints unleashed i appreciate you watching the introduction and i hope you enjoy the journey that lies ahead of not just me but us all right so part of this whole 12-week process is going to be testing and retesting or at least a beginning and not just a progression but the end of the 12 weeks i'm hoping to see some improvements uh, but again because I'm working on it, there's gonna be improvements already. So let me show you some baseline movements that I really, really wanna work on, although slightly unorthodox. Uh, I'm not using a tool to measure my joint and the uh, joint progression. There are positions that I want to improve on, and that's what I'm gonna share with you now. All right, welcome back to my measurements. Not just my measurements, but what I'm going to use as a before so that in 12 weeks we're going to see the improvements of the positions that I'm going to show. There's three things that I'm looking for. I'm not, I don't want to get too greedy and look for uh, a lot of other things, right? Three things I'm looking for that for these next 12 weeks. Now, the first one is going to be, I would like to be able to sit on my knees, right? So here is my current I guess, capabilities of my knees. So as I sit back, I can start feeling my knees. Now this hurts here, like I'm almost at max, right? And there's still, look over my body weight. My body weight is forward because I'm not putting any weight on my hips because if I do, I will sink into the position. So right now, this is my current capability. Now, if I warm up, I'm sure I'll be able to get down lower, but as a beginning point or starting point, that's what I'm capable of doing. That is it. That is why I'm looking to increase my flexibility. All right, I'll show the opposite direction. 
All right, I'm again, it's starting to warm up, so I'm starting to come down little by little, but still, uh, my body weight is forward. That's about as far as I can go. So with the program that I'm using, I'm hoping, and I'll explain the program later, I'm hoping that that can be improved. The next one, if you, because I'm on the short end of the athletes when, you come, when it comes to sports, I was always in, on picture day, because I was one of the smaller ones, I was always in front. Now, if we're sitting in front, the position that we're normally in is crisscross. I can't crisscross to save my life. That's how tight my hips are. So let's start off with a beginning. Right there, again, my weight wants to take me back because my knees aren't allowing me to go forward. My knees and my hips, I'm not gonna lie, it's both. So if you look at all my pictures, I'm always like, ooh, <laughs> because back then I never stretched. And this is the result of, of not stretching. And again, this is much, much better than what I was before, uh, before that conversation with Larry. So right now I'm here. I would like to get comfortable in this position and be able to drop my knees down to the ground. That's the hope, or at least get closer in these next 12 weeks. Now the third and final, now this one's more of a dynamic movement. I would, on top of learning more leg locks in jiu-jitsu, I would love to learn more wrestling. Now, when I first first started, we had a lot of wrestling coaches and we were, I was learning wrestling. Once I had my knee surgery, it limited the things that, or at least the, the faith that I had in my knees to do certain positions or certain takedowns. And then once I had the other sur surgery on the other knee, I really stayed away from takedowns that required me to shoot, right? Shooting just means, you know, lower my level and shooting forward, which I'll show in a second, to get under your opponent's hips to take them down. My knees have always prevented me from doing this smoothly or at least comfortably. So my other goal is to be able to double leg takedown comfortably. Now I'll show what I'm capable of doing now and hopefully in the future, my knees will be much, much better or it won't hurt. Now, one side, and mind you, I'm not warmed up. I have not done anything for a warm up. I have just got out the car, set up the cameras and I'm performing these movements. Now, once I'm warmed up, I'm able to do it, but I wanna be able to be supple enough to do it at any moment. So when I do this takedown or the movement, the right side, when the right leg is in front, feels comfortable. I wouldn't say 100%, but it feels comfortable. Now when I do it on my left side, now I start to feel weakness. And because I feel weakness, I shy away from the movement, or at least even thinking about doing it, because I, I feel like if my knee gets totally flexed, totally flexed while someone's on top of me, then I feel like my knees are just gonna get crushed and destroyed. So that's been the PTSD or the insecurity that I've had on my knees when it comes to uh, grappling. So the double leg takedown, again, this is just the movement for you wrestler, wrestlers out there. This is not the 100% what it looks like. I'm just showing the level change of my legs. And I'll describe the part where I really want to improve. So once I level change, I have to drop my leg down onto the ground, right? That requires a lot of flexion on the knees, right? Once I finish, a lot of flexion on the knees in order to get down there. So again, the right side was not 100%. I could still feel like I kind of had to not, I didn't feel like my knee could fall onto the ground and my hip and, or my butt and my heel connect comfortably. He's beginning to drive off of his back leg. And you can see that right here. So again, power from that back leg, really important. As he comes in. Right, so again, if you look at my hip, look at my hip, look at my heel, I should be able to get down there comfortably and fall down. Still hurts, right? But at least I'm able to do it. Not comfortably, but I can do it. Now the left side, I have total insecurity on this side. So here is, Whew, that's a lot better than I expected. 
So again, let me do. I, when I when I'm doing it, I can hear the just the knee crunch. Do it again. Okay, so that's how, and I'm sure you can tell in the movement. I haven't looked, you know, when I watch the video, I'll be able to see. But you can see the difference. There's a hesitation, there's a fear, right? I don't want that fear. So this is the reason why I'm doing this training for the next 12 weeks, is not just for jujitsu to do a double leg takedown or not just to sit in a kneeling position or crisscross. If I have the flexibility and the strength in my knees and hips, that's going to strengthen and help me with the race that I want to do in this upcoming year. So I haven't talked about my goal yet, which I'll explain a little bit later, but these are the beginnings, beginning videos or the beginning shots of my starting point. So at the end of the 12, week, 12 weeks, I'll redo it again and see where the pro progression is. We'll see. All right, so this portion of the video I'm going to introduce the two programs, mainly one program that I'm going to be using to increase the flexibility of my knees and my hips. So I decided to go with the ATG online coaching. This is the knees over toes guy. Now, I know that he gained popularity on YouTube several years back and I've always heard of the guy but I have always been a Kelly Starrett guy so I mainly stuck with Ke Kelly Starrett until one day Kelly Starrett mentioned knees over toes guy and then he was then on my radar so I kind of looked into him little by little and realized that what I'm looking for is what he is preaching and if you look at the knee ability zero up in the left upper left hand corner on the quadrant that angle of his knee and ankle where the ankle is almost touching well it is touching his butt there's no space in between his leg that is what i'm searching for and that picture is the whole reason and his name the whole reason why i chose his program so this is a 12-week program so the knee ability zero that's kind of like the starter. I'm gonna do that for two weeks. And then the other, the back ability zero, the ATG zero and the zero shred, I'm gonna do three weeks of each. So by the end of the 12 weeks, I'll have done all of them at least three times, except for the first one. So that's the goal and that's what I've chosen. This is part one. The next program, that I am choosing from is from the one and only Kelly Starrett. Now I'm a big fan of Kelly Starrett and I've been following him now for the last 10 or so years. And he's helped me or his teachings or his philosophies have definitely helped me get to where I'm at. Although it doesn't seem like I'm that far, but one of the things that I really, really picked up on and worked on was getting into a deep squat. So I definitely owe that to Kelly Starrett and his philosophies. So I decided that I'm gonna use the Ready State app, which is Kelly Starrett's app, to work on my hips. So I've taken the hip, I'm sorry, I've taken the mobility score and my scores are as follows. My trunk is 100%, my shoulders are 73%, my hip is 83%, and my ankle is 67%. I am going to use or go to my mobility plan and choose the hip. And then every day there's gonna give me three hip exercises to do that's gonna work on my hip mobility. So I'm gonna use the hip program from Kelly Starrett and I'm gonna use the workout program for the knees over toes ATG online coaching. So that is my plan and that's how i'm going to incorporate the two programs together and i'm also going to incorporate stick mobility now i'll introduce stick mobility in the videos with videos and i'll talk a little bit about them but they are amazing sticks and if you have them use them if you don't have them you're going to want to get them they're great for uh, for flexibility so that is the plan that's how i'm going to attack this 12-week program of joints unleashed so after the race, I took a week off, I went back to jujitsu. Now that I'm back in jujitsu, you know, I'm just kind of easing my way in and there was this new blue belt 
that was there. And I just decided, you know, I went, my first role was with the brown belt. My second role was, was with the brown belt. I mean, like they were attacking to attack, which is totally fine. I understand, I'm a black belt. I'm supposed to handle it. So I, on my third round, I was like, whew, you know, I'm not in shape for jujitsu. I'm in shape for triathlon, but jujitsu is a whole different story. So I was like, I decided to kind of take a round, take a round off. And I went with this new guy, this new blue belt. They didn't know anything about him. And I wasn't there to bully him. I was just there to take a round off. I wasn't really paying attention 100%. And he caught me in a leg lock. And he apologized profusely. Oh, I'm so sorry. Is this okay? And I was like, man, it is totally fine. I don't, I don't think it's disrespectful. I got caught slipping. You caught me. Something for me to learn. And I'm glad that he got me because, or submitted me via a leg lock. Because it motivated me to want to do something about it and something i've been talking about for years i've been talking about it i'm talking about it and when you talk about it and don't do anything then you're just wasting time so i think i was tired of wasting time and i decided to call one of my very very good friends benji silva actually former roommate of mine and he trains at a different academy he trains with kyotera and you know i train somewhere else so and when i was teaching I didn't have time to go visit him or at least to go train with him. And, you know, we both have our black belts and we've had it now. He's had it before me. So he's approaching maybe four years. I'm approaching three and we have yet to get together. And being that he's, he means a lot to me, I feel like an idiot not utilizing his knowledge because he is a master when it comes to the leg lock game. And I decided after I got submitted with that blue belt that enough is enough again not the ego i just know that that was my weakness and i said no more so i called up my friend benji and i asked him i want to hire you i want you to teach me the leg lock game and all your systems so it is now saturday 11:45, and i'm here i'm in palo alto i'm here visiting his facility and i wanted to document it you know, I just did a whole year of documentation with triathlon and I'm gonna come up with more because I have more goals that I wanna achieve. But for the short-term goal, I've chosen the leg lock system with Benji because I know it's one of my weaknesses. So today is my first one-on-one -on -one session with Benji and I look forward to learning something that I've been wanting to learn for a long time. So I have my tripod, I got my camera, I got my gi, I got all my stuff. I am excited to learn.